Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessings on all of you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So, Thursday was Balaram Purnima. So, I spoke on a Zoom program with devotees from uh, Panama on Wednesday night. But there's so much more that I didn't get a chance to talk about. So, tonight I was given carte blanche by Premji and by our host, Manuhar. So when I get carte blanche, take the money and run. So Lord Balaram, I have personal great affection for Lord Balaram. When I was the vice president and life membership director for ISKCON Los Angeles from 95 to 2007, many times I would get the opportunity to carry Lord Balaram, with another devotee, of course, from the altar to the bathing ghat. Every year I would get that opportunity. So I have a special affection for Lord Balaram. The great Vaishnava Kavi, Jayadev Goswami, in his introduction to his most elevated book, Gita Govinda, he has written an introduction which most of us know as the Dasha Avatar Stotram. We sang the Nisringa. There are ten shlokas. And the eighth one is Balaram. Vahasiva Pushi Vishade Vasanang Jaladabang Halahati Bhiti Milita Yamunabam Keshavadrita Haladar Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Keshavadrita Sankarsana Rupa Keshavadrita Baladeva Rupa Keshavadrita Balabhadra Rupa Keshavadrita Balarama Rupa All those are different names. Keshavadrita Deviki Nandana Sutta Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare O Keshava Keshava, of course, refers to Krishna, who has very fine black hair, bluish hair actually, tinted red, which we learn from the Dhammodarashtakam prayers. Krishna's deep bluish hair tinged with red. I'm waiting for the day. Who would like to see that Krishna with the bluish hair tinted red? Mm. O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, you have assumed the form of Balaram. So notice, Jayadev Goswami understands the ultimate conclusion of Vedanta. Krishna's tu Bhagavan Swayam, that all the incarnations, six kinds, doesn't matter, all the incarnations are expansions of Keshava Krishna. So it says, you have assumed the form of Balaram, wielder of the plow, Haladar, Jai, all glories unto you. On your brilliant white body, you wear garments the color of a fresh blue rain cloud. These garments are also colored like the beautiful dark hue of the river Yamuna, who once felt great fear 
due to the striking of your plowshare. So that pastime that Jayadev Goswami is encapsulating, that pastime is found deep within the 10th canto. But I'm going to speak about specific asuras or demons which Balaram killed 5,000 years ago. Krishna, of course, killed so many demons, but Balaram also had his share. So the first demon that Balaram killed was Denuka, Denuka, revealing their boyhood Palganda phase of pastimes. Balaram and Krishna were one day bringing the cows to pasture when they entered an attractive forest decorated with a clear lake. There they began playing forest sports along with their friends. So just see, God likes to play. He's active. He's not some dull, dull, dull stone, something impersonal. No. Purusha. Purusha Uttama in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is known as Purushottama, the topmost transcendental person. And here we see he likes to play with his cowherd friends. Pretending to tire, Lord Baladev lay his head upon the lap of a cowherder boy and rested as Lord Krishna helped relieve his elder brother's fatigue by massaging Balaram's feet. So here is interesting. Krishna is the supreme God, and yet he's massaging his brother's feet. Now, materially, it makes no sense. Balaram is Krishna's first expansion, so how can he also be his elder brother? Huh? Yes. That's why you have to throw out material logic when you enter the door. Otherwise, these things won't make sense. Try to visualize an elephant on a dish. If you can visualize this, then you can enter into Bhagavatam, especially 10th Canto. Then Lord Krishna also placed his head on the lap of a cowherder boy to rest, while another cowherd boy massaged Krishna's feet. In this way, Krishna, Balaram, and their cowherder friends enjoyed various pastimes. So when Krishna comes or when Balaram comes, whether they are dancing, whether they are playing, whether they're killing, it's all enjoyment. It's all what we call lila, enjoyable pastimes. Now during this play, Sri Dham, Subala, Stoka Krishna, and other cowherder boys described to Balaram and Krishna that there was a wicked and irrepress irrepressible demon named Denuka who had assumed the form of a jackass and was living in the Taliban forest near Govardhan Hill. This forest was full of many varieties of sweet fruits. But fearing this demon, no one dared try to relish the taste of those fruits. And thus someone had to kill that demon and all of his associates. Hearing of the situation, Balaram and Krishna set off for this forest in order to fulfill the desire of their companions. So that's another topic. Bhakta Vatsala. This is another name for Krishna or God. Bhakta Vatsala. He is the best friend of his devotee. So here, Krishna and Balaram, they're going to attack this demon so that the cowherd boys can taste this sweet fruit. And the cowherd boy said, oh, these fruits are so sweet. 
You have to try them. But there is that demon. Arriving at the Taliban, Lord Balaram shook many fruits out of the palm trees. And as soon as Balaram did so, the jackass demon Denuka ran swiftly to attack Balaram. But Balaram grabbed Denuka's hind legs with one hand, whirled him around, and threw Denuka into the top of a tree, thus slaying the demon. Then all of Denuka Asura's friends, overcome by fury, then rushed to attack. But Balaram and Krishna took hold of them one by one, swinging them around and killed them until the disturbance was finally finished. When Krishna and Balaram returned to the cowherder community, Yashoda, Krishna's mother, and Rohini, Balaram's mother, placed them on their respective laps. They kissed their faces, fed them with finely prepared food, and then put them to bed. The next demon, Pralamba Asura. Sri Vrindavan, where Krishna and Balaram enacted their childhood pastimes, was even during the summer decorated with all the qualities of spring. How? Wow. Even though it's summer, feels like spring. At that time, Lord Krishna became absorbed in various sports, surrounded by Balaram and the other cowherder boys. One day, they were intently dancing, singing, and playing when a demon named Pralamba entered their midst, and he was disguised as a cowherder boy. The all-knowing, omniscient Lord Krishna could see through the disguise but even as Krishna thought of how to kill this demon, Krishna treated Pralamba as a friend. Krishna then suggested to his young friends and Maladev that they play a game involving contending parties. Taking the role of leaders, Krishna and Balaram divided the boys into two groups and determined that the losers would have to carry the winners on their shoulders. So we used to do this when I was a child. So look at this, it's 5,000 years old, this sporting. Actually, it's billions of years, but at least here we see Balaram and Krishna play just like young boys play. Thus, when Sridham Vrishava and other members of Balaram's party were victorious, Krishna and another boy in his party had to carry them on their shoulders. Pralamba Asura thought that the unconquerable Krishna would be too great an opponent to contend with. So the demon fought with Balaram instead and was defeated. Taking Lord Balaram on his back, Pralamba Asura began to walk away very swiftly. But Balaram then became as heavy as Mount Sumeru. And the demon, unable to carry Balaram, had to reveal his true demoniac form. When Balaram then saw this terrible form, Balaram struck the demon a ferocious blow on the head with his fist. This blow shattered Pralamba Asura's head. Just as lightning bolts hurled by the king of the demigods, Indra, shatter mountains. The demon repeatedly vomited blood and fell upon the ground. When the cowherder boys saw Lord Balaram return, they joyfully embraced and congratulated Balaram as the demigods showered garlands of flowers from the heavens and glorified Balaram. The next demon, 
took place, so these first two demons took place in Rajalila or Vrindavan. The remainder take place when Krishna is in Dwaraka, married to only 16,108 wives. That's all. So this demon was Rukmi. This was the brother of Krishna's first wife, Rukmini. Now Rukmi should have been killed when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini from the Swayamvara. And he was about to kill him when Balaram and Rukmini interceded. Rukmini fell at Krishna's feet and said, No, it's my wedding day. Don't, don't, don't kill my brother. After all, he was just looking out for my interest. And then Balaram came, chastised, Hey, Krishna, what are you doing? Because he's now our family member. You can't kill him. So Krishna said, Okay, at least let me do this. So Krishna took his sword and snipped at Rukmi, at his hair, at his mustache and his beard, making him look funny, weird. Which for a Kshatriya, that's unbelievable. You can imagine somebody messing up Mr. Orange Hair. <laughs> so, somebody powerful position, they don't want to be even touched. So Rukmi was spared because of Balaram. But now let's see. Jai. Each of Lord Krishna's 16,108 wives had 10 sons and one daughter. And those sons also had 10 sons in the womb of Rukmi's daughter, Rukmavati, Krishna's son, Pradumna, fathered Aniruddha. Although Sri Krishna had disrespected Rukmi, to please his sister Rukmini, Rukmi gave his own daughter in marriage to Prajumna, Krishna's son, and he also gave his granddaughter to Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. Bali, the son of Krittavarma, married Rukmini's daughter, Charumati. So now you know the name of Rukmini's only daughter. Everybody say Charumati. The other names of Krishna's daughters, I have not been able to research that, but I did this one. So at Aniruddha's wedding, Lord Baladev, Sri Krishna and other Yadavas went to Rukmi's palace in the city of Bojakata. After the ceremony, Rukmi challenged Lord Baladev to a game of dice, just like somebody else was challenged to a crooked game of dice. Yes, by and who was the master? Shakuni, yes. Yudhisthira was also induced because that's a Kshatriya spirit. If you're challenged, you can't be a wimp. If you're challenged, so even though Yudhisthira knew he was going to be cheated out of respect for Dhritarashtra and the Kshatriya principles, he agreed. Let's see what happens in Balaram's case. Rukmi challenged Lord Baladev to a game of dice. In the first match, Rukmi defeated Balaram, whereupon his friend, the king of Kalinga, laughed at Balaram, displaying his teeth. Have you ever had that experience? Somebody laughing at you, showing their teeth. It's very, very insulting. It's happened. 
However, Lord Baladev won the next match. But Rukmi refused to concede defeat. Hmm. What does that remind me of? January 6th. Hmm. Somebody wouldn't acknowledge the... Hmm. A voice then spoke from the sky, announcing that Baladev had in fact won. But... Being encouraged by other wicked kings, Rukmi offended Lord Baladev by saying that while Balaram was certainly expert at tending cows, that Balaram knew nothing of playing dice. So again, Rukmi declared, no, 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 I won. I won. Thus insulted, Lord Baladev angrily struck Rukmi dead with his club. The king of Kalinga tried to flee, but Lord Baladev seized him and knocked out all his teeth. I also got my teeth knocked out. My teeth were so bad in 2008 and 9. my wife said, you got to go to the dentist. So I went to three different dentists. They all looked at me and said, can't help you, buddy. They're too far gone. They have to all come out. And I was like, what? Went to three different dentists. They all took one look. Nope, too far gone. Then I got these. So I know what it's like to be toothless. Lord Baladev seized him and knocked out all his teeth. Then the other offensive kings, their arms, thighs, and heads, wounded by Baladev's blows, fled in all directions, bleeding profusely. Sri Krishna, however, expressed neither approval nor disapproval of his brother-in-law's death because if he said one thing or another, Either Rukmini would feel bad or Balaram would feel bad. So sometimes silence is golden. That's one of the biggest marriage lessons I ever learned. Sometimes it's better to just say, yes, dear, because the arguing will go on and on and on and on and you won't get any prashad. So sometimes... Giving in is smart. Just don't. Hare Krishna. Lord Baladev and the other Yadavas then seated Aniruddha and his bride on a fine chariot and they all set off for Dwaraka. The next demon, Dwavida. Now this Dwavida was also in Ram Leela, Ramachandra's Leela. So, somehow or other, after... So, to be one of the monkey in Hanuman Sugriva's army, fighting on behalf of Ram, certainly Dwavida was a noble soul. But what happened after Ramachandra departed... Dwavida, he started to associate with demons. So association is very important. Even he is an associate. By bad association, he also became bad, as you will see. There was a demon, Naraka Asura, whom Lord Krishna killed, and he had a friend named Dwavida who was an ape. Dravida wanted to avenge the death of his friend, Narakasura. So Dravida set fire to the homes of the cowherders, devastated Lord Krishna's province of Anarta, and flooded coastal lands by churning the ocean's water with his mighty arms. The rascal Dravida then tore down the trees in the ashrams of great sages and even passed stool and urine 
on their sacrificial fires. Duvida kidnapped men and women, imprisoning them in mountain caves, which Duvida sealed off with boulders. After thus disrupting the entire land and polluting many young women of respectable families, Duvida came upon Rivataka Mountain, where Duvida found Lord Baladev enjoying in the company of a bevy of attractive women. Elsewhere in Bhagavatam, it says that, as you all know, Krishna danced with the gopis the night of the rasa dance. But Balaram has his own set of gopis that don't mix with Krishna. And they are his associates. And that is described elsewhere. When Balaram does a springtime ras rasa yatra with his gopis. Ignoring Balaram, who was apparently intoxicated from drinking his favorite Varuni liquor, Dvavida displayed his anus to the women right in front of Baladev and further insulted them by making crude gestures with his eyebrows and passing stool and urine. Dvavida's outrageous behavior Thus angered Lord Baladev, and Baladev threw a stone at the ape. But Dvavida managed to dodge it. Dvavida then ridiculed Lord Baladev and tugged at the women's dresses. Seeing this audacity, Lord Baladev decided to kill Dvavida. Thus Baladev took up his club and his plow weapon. Powerful Dvavida then armed himself by pulling up a shala tree from the ground. And with this tree, Dvavida struck Baladev on the head. Lord Baladev, however, remained unmoved and smashed the tree trunk to pieces. Dvavida uprooted another tree and yet another and another until the forest was denuded. Hare Krishna. Yes, I have to do two things at once. Speak and bless at the same time. One of my many talents. Baladev simply broke all the trees to pieces. Then the foolish ape Duvida started throwing a barrage of stones. Lord Baladev crushed them all to powder after which Dvavida charged Balaram, hitting him on the chest with his fists, thus infuriating Baladev. Now, putting aside his club and plow weapons, Lord Balaram then struck Dvavida's throat and shoulder, at which point the ape Dvavida vomited blood and fell down. Having killed Dvavida, Lord Baladev set off for Dwaraka as demigods and sages, flower, showered flowers from the sky, and offered Balaram sufficient praises, prayers, and obeisances. So, is this there's another demon? Let me see how many. I don't think we're going to have time to follow them. Maybe. So the next demon is Roma Harshan. Now this particular episode in the 10th canto is very unique. So Balaram did not participate in the battle of Kurukshetra because he was favorable to Duryodhan, his student, and the Kauravas, and Balaram even wanted his sister Subhadra to be married to Duryodhan. But Krishna found out that Arjuna was in love with Subhadra. And as I said, Krishna is Bhaktavatsala. So Krishna approved of a plan by which Arjuna kidnapped Subhadra. And Balaram got angry. But Krishna fell at his feet and said, no, no, let it be. 
So when it came time for the battle, Balaram said, I'm stuck. I am inclined to support you, Duryodhan, but my brother disapproves, and I never disobey my brother. Therefore, I'm not going to fight on either side. I'm going to remain like Switzerland, neutral. So Balaram instead went touring in South India. Anyone who's been to South India, there are many, many tirthas and holy places and holy rivers and wonderful temples. I have seen temples thousands and thousands of years old. So Balaram went touring all these holy places and he came one day to Naimisharanya. Naimisharanya is the place where the Bhagavatam was spoken for the second time by Sutta Goswami to these same sages. They were there performing sacrifice for a thousand years for the benefit of the people of Kali Yuga. So when Balaram came, there was a great assembly of Brahmins and sages and rishis, and sitting on the Vyasasan, the elevated seat, was this Roma Harshan. Now technically, according to Vedic calculations, Roma Harshan was not actually a Brahmana. So he should not have sat on the Vyasasan, but the sages of Naimisharanya elevated him to that position. So it was okay that he was speaking on the Vedic scriptures. When Balaram entered the assembly, everyone stood up except Romaharshan because he was thinking, I don't have to get up. I'm sitting on the Biasasan. I am number one here. So Romaharshan could not understand that Balaram was Bhagavan. But everybody else, you would think, Romaharshan would have gotten a clue if everybody else stood up, duh, you might want to take a hint. So Balaram was thinking, who is this rascal sitting on the Vyasasan and doesn't understand who I am? No, 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 my job, I have come along with my brother, Paritranaya Sadunang, Vinashaya Chaduskritang, Dharma Sangstarpanartaya. I have come to establish the principles of real religion, true religion, which is known as Sanatan Dharma, the eternal religion, which is true yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Unlike our scientists, one day they say this, then something, no, no, that's all wrong. Now we say this. No, that's relative truth that changes. But absolute truth is true all phases of time. So Balaram could see this person is faulty. So Balaram took a blade of kusha grass. Kusha grass is used in Vedic sacrifice. So he took one blade, just the blade, and he touched Romaharshan with the blade of grass. Romaharshan died. That's what we call Bala. Power, his very name, Balaram. Powerful pleasure. Baladev, the god of power. Balabhadra, the powerful, auspicious. So many names for Balaram. Just with a, could you imagine going, like, we tell the people in Ukraine, okay, we'll just give you some kusha grass and you can fight the rascal Russians with kusha grass. It ain't gonna work unless you're Lord Balaram. Balaram could end that thing within one second. But just with the blade of kusha grass, boom. So all the sages, oh, 
Balaram, you must not be aware that we elevated him. Now we know, the sages knew, we know that you are Bhagavan, God. We know there is no fault on your part, but you're supposed to set the example. So this doesn't look good. People are going to use this as an excuse to kill indiscriminately. Balaram said, no problem, no problemo. I can, if you like, I can bring him back to life. That's God. He can kill and he can bring back. The sage says, no, 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 it's okay. He can stay dead. But you have to do something. So Balaram said, okay. Roma Harshan's son is named Sutta Goswami. All the benedictions you gave him, long life, full access to the Vedic knowledge, they gave him so many blessings. All those blessings will be transferred to his son, Sutta Goswami. And you see the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam is that Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages of Naimisharanya after the battle of Kurukshetra. In fact, when Shukadeva Goswami was speaking to Parikshit, Sutta Goswami was there front and center. And Shukadev said in the assembly, you see this person, Sutta? He's Sutta for now. You see this person, Sutta? He is going to later on repeat this same subject matter that I've been speaking for seven days and seven nights. And that's exactly what happened. The Bhagavatam that we get is there because of Sutta Goswami. Then Balaram said, you know what? I could have brought him back to life with no memory of the incident. But the Brahman said, no, no, it's, it's okay. So then Balaram said, okay, what else can I do to atone? They said, well, there's another demon, Bolvala. And he comes so many times and he destroys our sacrifice. He pollutes our sacrifice. He destroys our sacrifice. We can't complete it. So Balaram waited for the particular moon day. I don't know if it was the dark moon or the full moon. And of course that Bovala demon came and Krishna took his plow and dragged him out from the sky and then took his club and killed Bovala. And the sages said, you have done more than we can expect. So then Balaram continued to tour South Indian holy places and he wound up back in Kudukshetra the day Bhima and Duryodhan, the final battle, were fighting with clubs. That's when Balaram arrived and he told them, stop this fighting. Duryodhan, you're more expert with the club. And Bhima, you have superior strength. Neither of you are going to win. So that's when Krishna had to do a little cheating. He told Bhima, okay, I know the origin of Jarasandha. I will teach you one move. So that's how Duryodhan. Anyway, I'm over time. Thank you very much. May Lord Balaram remove all your obstacles in your life and give you love of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.